Jim Wright told us a couple of weeks ago that after your year here, he got up at a meeting and told the Cubs organization that you were going to be a can't miss Hall of Famer yeah. after your first year. That's what he says. Do you, what was your mindset back then? I mean, really, back then it was like I said earlier. You you, you want to move up. You know, I had, I had told myself. You know, obviously the odds are against you ever ever making it in major leagues, let alone having a career where you can support your family when it's all said and done. So, you know, I just kind of, I had a little deal with myself that, hey, the first time I moved backwards, I was going to school and I was going to try to find a job. And so, you know, having that mindset back then, it was, I didn't want to do that. So I wanted to make sure I moved up and, and I never wanted to take a step back. That was kind of my mindset. Whatever it took to, you know, A ball, get the double A. Double A, get the triple A. Triple A, go from there. You know, I never wanted to back up. Do you, have, do you have a game plan now? I mean, somewhere you want to be in three, five years now? I don't. You know, well, yeah, I know where I want to be. I want to be home watching my kid grow up. You know, he's 13, and uh, uh, he's playing Legion ball. He just started that. You know, I've, I've enjoyed being around him and, and his team and trying to help those kids. And, uh, you know, I enjoy spending time with him. You know, this job allows me to kind of do both. You know, I can kind of, I have the luxury of picking and choosing to come and go. And, uh, but, you know, the most, the most important thing is, you know, for me right now is being at home, watching the kid grow up, make sure he stays on the right path. You know what I mean? Is he a pitcher? Thinks he is. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting there. Not yet, but he's getting there. Do you remember your first game here, opening night? I do. I remember bits of it. And uh, I remember I went nine innings, and I threw like 130 pitches. That's what I remember, because that's where the game's changed a little bit, where now, you know, it's kind of like, you know, a guy gets around 70 and all of a sudden you start looking at, hey, how many is that? You know, you start looking at that and, and uh, you know, it's more, I think one of the differences that I've seen so far is it's more about developing the player and his stuff and how to throw his pitches and keep them healthy. Whereas I think when I was coming up, it was about trying to win. There was more, you know, you, you tried to win more. And, you know, that's something that that I was grateful for. You know, I remember Jim Wright told us a couple of weeks ago that after your year here, he got up at a meeting and told the Cubs organization that you were going to be a can't miss Hall of Famer yeah. after your first year. That's what he says. Do you, what was your mindset back then? I mean, really, back then it was like I said earlier. You you, you want to move up. You know, I had, I had told myself. You know, obviously the odds are against you ever, ever making it in major leagues, let alone having a career where you can support your family when it's all said and done. So, you know, I just kind of, I had a little deal with myself that, hey, the first time I moved backwards, I was going to school and I was going to try to find a job. And so, you know, having that mindset back then, it was... I didn't want to do that, so I wanted to make sure I moved up, and and I never wanted to take a step back. That was kind of my mindset. Whatever it took to, you know, A ball, get the double A. Double A, get the triple A. Triple A, go from there. You know, I never wanted to back up. Do you, have, do you have a game plan now? I mean, somewhere you want to be in three, five years now? I don't. You know, well, yeah, I know where I want to be. I want to be home watching my kid grow up. You know, he's 13, and... Uh, uh, He's playing Legion ball. He just started that. You know, I've, I've enjoyed being around him and, and his team and trying to help those kids. And, uh, you know, I enjoy spending time with him. You know, this job allows me to kind of do both. You know, I can kind of, I have the luxury of picking and choosing to come and go. And, uh, but, you know, the most, most important thing is, you know, for me right now is being at home watching the kid grow up, make sure he stays on the right path, you know what I mean? Is he a pitcher? Thinks he is. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting there, not yet, but he's getting there.
you remember your first game here, opening night? I do. I remember bits of it. And uh, I remember I went nine innings. And I threw like 130 pitches. <laughs> that's what I remember. Because that's where the game's changed a little bit. Where now, you know, it's kind of like, you know, a guy gets around 70 and all of a sudden you start looking at, hey, how is that? You know, you start looking at that and, and uh, you know, it's more, I think one of the differences that I've seen so far is it's more about developing the player and his stuff and how to throw his pitches and keep them healthy. Whereas I think when I was coming up, it was about trying to win. There was more, you know, you, you tried to win more. And, you know, that's something that that I was grateful for. You know, I remember I remember a game I had in double A and I threw a curveball in the eighth inning and got beat. My pitching coach said, Hey, when you're tired, it's easier to throw a change up than a curveball. You know? And, you know, I think if I had to come up now, I never would have had to throw a pitch tired and and, and really learn how to how to fight through an inning. And, you know, you're kind of struggling a little bit physically. And, uh, you know, I was just kind of, kind of grateful that I came up when I did and was able to win your own game or lose your own game. I was talking to Andy Mazur once, and he said one of the games when you taught the Padres that you know, after a 3-2 pitch, you kind of reacted funny on the mound, and he asked you after that afterwards, and, and you said that, um, you'd waited years to get back on him on that pitch. When did you start harboring the memories to get back at batters? Did you keep a notebook here or anything like that? Well, you just, you know, you fail, and you don't want to fail that way again. You know? And there's nothing wrong with failing unless you keep doing it the same way. Then there's a problem. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, I didn't necessarily fail, but I think I could have had more success if I tried something different. And, you know, it was, hey, it was a 3-2 pitch in the last inning, you know, where you can't walk the guy. And, you know, I think what I learned that day is you can either try not to walk somebody or you can try to get them out. You know, I think uh, most pitchers have thrown pitches with the intent not to walk you. And, I didn't want to be one of those. I wanted to get you out. You know, I had thrown enough pitches where I didn't want to walk you. And I wanted to kind of go to the next level and try to get hitters out and not worry about walking. And that was a situation where that's something you struggle with a lot as a pitcher, mentally, on the mound. You know, everyone seems to hate walks, but, you know, sometimes a walk's better than a double or a homer. You know what I mean? And there's that fine line of picking and choosing when to not walk them or, or get them out. That's why it was big for me, because I cleared that hurdle. you think we'll ever go back to nine inning pitchers again, or workhorses like? Yeah, was, hey, there's someone threw in last night. Who shut out the Red Sox last night? <laughs> you know? Masters. Thank you. BM2 or 11 nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it'll happen. <clears throat> but, you know, I think uh, the young guys, you know, who knows, it might start to change back in the future, who knows. You played a lot of, against a lot of greats. Which three or four banners did you respect the most? Well, easily when I played, I thought Barry Bonds was the one that demanded the most respect. You know, even when he was in Pittsburgh, before he went to the Giants, he was really good. Uh, Tony Gwynn was probably like the best hitter. You know, I think uh, probably didn't have the power Bonds had. He probably wouldn't steal as many bases as Bonds would. Uh, I always thought Gary Sheffield was pretty good. He scared you when he walked up there.